during the second program of the current series, Bringing It All Back Home. And the producers would like to dedicate this program to the memory of the late Tom Clancy. I think one reason that the Irish tradition remains so strong is that there's a treasury of magnificent melodies. Uh, anybody putting together a song uh, realize it's harder to make up a new melody than they thought, and that the easiest thing to do is swipe an old melody and put new words to it. And this has been done all through American history, putting new words to old Irish melodies. In America, with each wave of Irish emigration, songs and ballads arrived. The Irish brought their music to farmland and city, to Texas cattle ranges, and to Wisconsin lumber camps. As Irish emigrants took on new American identities, so too did their music. This was to have a profound impact on the way popular song culture developed in America. Irish songs and ballads were absorbed into American popular music. The result was to be heard in music halls, on concert platforms, on radio, and in commercial recordings. A lot of the music from over there influenced songs over here that you would never dream of. Uh, songs like, I'm sitting here sighing and rocking the cradle, rocking the baby that's none of my own, which was supposed to have been a song about the, uh, the uh, Holy Family. Well, it came over here and got as far as Texas, I think, uh, and they would sing songs like Get along, little doggy, get along on your trail You know that Wyoming will be your new home Based on that, songs like The Bard of Armagh uh, The tune was picked up and became one of the best known uh, cowboy songs in America The Streets of Laredo So I walked out in the streets of Laredo It in turn influenced one of the great blues songs called the St. James Infirmary Blues. So there was a thread tying all of them together. Tommy Makem emigrated to America from the small town of Cady in County Armagh. The community into which he was born entertained itself through music making. His mother Sarah was a well-known singer and his father Peter played the fiddle. When the song collector Jean Ritchie arrived in Ireland in 1952, she discovered in this community an important source of the traditional music of her home place in the Appalachians. My music collection is, uh, is extensive. I've got, as I say, miles of tapes, and, uh, but I think that the collection I did of people, of knowing people, was, was even better. And that's something that you can't put down on paper. Uh, we went into Sarah Makem's kitchen, and uh, she was she would just took us right in uh, and started to um, uh, slice bacon. I have a wonderful uh, recording of her getting supper or tea for us while while she's singing and talking to us, and she's singing. Um, um, she's you, you hear the the knife going through the bread, rah, 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 and then she can hear the bacon sizzling, and all the time she is singing. As I went out on a May morning, on a May morning, right early. As I rode out on a May morning, on a May morning, right early. I met me love upon the way, oh Lord, but she was early. Uh, I kept listening to it and uh, smelling the bacon and being reminded of something. And, uh, what it reminded me of, finally I thought of it, was a play game that we played back home. It's called Old King Cole Was a Jolly Old Soul. And it used almost the same tune that she was using. So that's how the music got, got there. Sometimes the words were changed, but the tune remained the same. They had a, they had a way of keeping the Irish tunes mostly in, because the Irish tunes were far superior, of course. <laughs> Old King Cole.
Oh, King Cole was a jolly old soul, and that you may know by his larning. He eat cornbread till his head turned red, and his old yellow cap needs darning. My pretty little pink, I once did think that I and you would marry. But now I've lost all hopes of you, and I ain't got long to tarry. Our boots was black, and our stockings white, and our buckles shone.